Yeah. So I was like, I don't care how many people tell me that this isn't going to work. I'm doing it. <laughs> because the alternative sucks. So... Great experiences build great leaders. Great leaders build great teams. This is Building Great Sales Teams. So how, how have things been? Things have been good. Things have been pretty good. Um, you know, business is going well. Podcasting is always a lot of fun. Pretty standard stuff. <laughs> Are you, uh, have you been traveling at all lately? Uh, not too much. Uh, not since I took a trip to, to Europe back in July. Nice. I was in a few places around Europe then. And otherwise, uh, I live in, uh, Sacramento, California, mm -hmm. um, which is about two hours east of San Francisco. So I'm kind of in between there. I go to San Francisco pretty often too. So it doesn't really, I don't really think about that as traveling though. Cause it's so close. Yeah. How, how far is, uh, Anaheim? From where you are, uh, Anaheim in the general LA area is about six hours south of me. Oh shit! Yeah, okay. I'll be in Laguna in a couple of weeks, and yeah. uh, Anaheim after that. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, I definitely I, I'm down there fairly often because I mean that's still like perfect weekend trip. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, a distance. Like you know, I take you know friday or something and then drive down there and then i'm mm -hmm. there for the weekend and drive back like that's totally fine but yeah it's definitely not like a day trip though yeah that makes yeah. sense so you've got path to podcast success as your podcast does your business have a uh name that would be the name of it as well Path to podcast success yeah gotcha okay your last episode was Drewby? That's um, just who you have on your website. Yeah, I believe so. I have them automatically go out, so I gotta double check, make sure which one came out. Let's say Wednesday. Yeah, which one came out today? So are you kind of focusing on a certain niche or no? Um, and yes, Drewby was the one that came out today. Uh, I mean, not, I mean, I'm, you know, entrepreneurs looking to start podcasts, established entrepreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, it's not, you know, it doesn't, podcasting isn't, uh, it's something that pretty much anyone can, can use. Right. Yeah. I niche down more of my, like I said, I mean, it's, I just work with established entrepreneurs. Typically yeah. newbies can't really afford my services. Um and I focus more on psychographic as well because I suppose to demographic because I uh, it's an ongoing relationship I have with my clients so they have to be the people that I would want to do that with mm -hmm. um, so I pay more attention to them as a person as opposed to like yeah I haven't heard that term that before sense. yeah psychographic yeah that's new for me I like yeah. it though it makes a lot of sense yeah yeah no I've I've I forget what book or something I uh -huh. I can't take credit for it. Uh, I, f I forget who kind of turned me on to that to that way of describing it, but mm -hmm. but yeah, no, I focus more on a psychographic because with the podcasting, there's no need to niche down further because I mean it's just podcast editing. You know, I'm not if I was yeah. doing like coaching or something, that'd be a different story. But this is very much a, a done for you service. Yeah, so, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yeah. All right. Is there anything in? Well, no. Sorry. That always drives me nuts when you switch screens, like on Macs, because they have the corners settings, mm. and all everything flies away, and I'm like, shit, <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind me, how long have you had your podcast? So it's been six months, and okay. I just released episode 53 this morning. Nice. 63. Nice. Yeah, because I've been we've been putting out. Uh, was it Ryan? Was it sixty three this morning? Oh, he's he's deep in something right now. You're good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was it was a uh, sixty three. Now it's gonna bug me. It's one of those things I I gotta know what it is. You're good. You're good. I understand. Sixty three. Yeah. 
You know what my title was to today's episode? What? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever heard of, uh, uh, obviously, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you follow his social media, like, he's on this strict diet or whatever, you know, a bunch, bunch of protein and all that kind of stuff. And, like, Sunday's his cheat day, so he's famous for his cheat meals, you know? It's like yeah. these insane cheat meals and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, he'll he'll do these posts where he's like, you know what? It wasn't cheat day, but I was just, I had a case of the fuckets, you know? And it happens sometimes. You get a case of the yeah. fuckets, and you're like, I work hard. You know what I mean? I want this. I'm going gonna, gonna to have some of it. You know, as long as you don't let it get out of control, it's okay. So Exactly. You know, so my episode was about the entrepreneur's case of the fuckets, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. fuck everything. Shut it all down. I don't want to do this shit no more. Why am I torturing myself, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I walk through the, the cycle, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of loss, loss, loss. All right, fuck everything. And then, you know, how you come out of it and... Yeah, it was a it was a good episode. I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it already. That's awesome. I mean, hey, that's yeah, I get it. It's a good way to describe it. You know, I've got case of the fuckets. <laughs> yeah, you can only take so many. You know, I guess I I always try to be a little different in that. You know, so many people share their wins and share all the good stuff, and you know, this is how I got here, and this is what you can learn from me because I'm winning. It's like sometimes yeah. we lose. You know what I mean? So it's like, are you willing to? You know, talk about that when you're in the loss. You know, when you're actually losing right okay. now, you're willing to post it out there. And well, like, you lose more than you win, so you're more likely to be in a loss than you are yeah. to win. And so, right, just... you know, that's kind of like where that came from. And I've always kind of been like that, super transparent. So I was just like, yeah. okay, I'll put it out there. I'm, I wasn't feeling creative. I didn't want to do a solo episode, you know, because, you know, solo episodes are a lot harder than, than the guest episodes, you know. Oh, and yeah. so I've actually, I've, I've, I don't do solo episodes on my mm-hmm. personal show. Yeah. Because I just have no, like, you know, it, take, it takes a lot more work to sit down and figure out what the content is, what I'm going to talk about. Like, no, I'll just let my guests make the content for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in that I have, and I, I think you could do this too. I mean, because I, I honestly, I get a lot of more feedback on my solo episodes than I do my guest episodes. Because right. it's I mean, I, I could do solo episodes. It's yeah. not that I couldn't do them. It's just that, like, and half the reason I do it too is for the relationships I create with my right. guests as well. Mm-hmm. And plus, I record. I mean, I release five days a week. Yeah, I have so many. Like, if if I add solo episodes, how are the you? Mix too, how are you doing that? Like, how are you getting five guests a week? That's insane. <laughs> like, how am I recording? Well, I have. I mean, I have. Well, let's say. I mean, this week uh, on Monday, I had three podcast interviews I recorded. Uh-huh. Yesterday, I had two. Today, I have three, and you're you're number four well you're number mm-hmm. three and i have one more podcast rep recording for my show after yeah. you tomorrow i have uh three and that's a pretty standard week mm-hmm. and so but to make it so that i don't uh when they ask me once my episode will be released and i want to be like oh it's gonna be released in six months from now yeah so to keep up with the amount of that i'm recording i release five days a week damn yeah that's a lot yeah I've i've had a few interviews that they released like three months later and i'm like by that time, half the stuff I said isn't relevant anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, this uh, this will release next Friday. Oh, so cool. it's Wednesday. Yeah. No, actually, next Wednesday. Yeah. Wow. So right. I'm I'm kind of like, yeah, and and that's the whole deal is if, if I don't get a guest booked in time because I've got other stuff going on, right? I just do a solo, solo episode. Episodes, yeah. Yeah. So I it's mean, kind for of, me, the re- I I do it so much because this it's my primary like. Yeah. And you know, that's just how I like to do. You know, I do business with the podcast, and that's how I create relationships with new people. So, mm-hmm. like, and that's one of the things I you could say is that's what I do. I've had over two hundred guests. You know, I think I I know a thing or two about bringing on guests and how to structure the conversation. And oh yeah, how to have a okay. successful episode. Yeah, no, that's that's <laughs> half the a lot of what I do with new clients is I walk them through like the interview process and like uh-huh. how to have a good episode. Because I mean, I have them. I, I'm able to do it so well now that I don't. Well, half the reason I'm able to release five days a week and have that be feasible as far as cost um and time for my team and and what i have to pay out is Mm -hmm. that like i know editing it's usually ever really done yeah i you know ryan's my producer but he he has to do very little editing every now and then it's it's mainly on solo episodes you know 
All right. I just get pissed off in the middle of the episode and walk away for five minutes and then come back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. The only editing I need to do is if there's maybe internet cuts out. Mm-hmm. And I guess I've had that happen once right. or twice. Oh, uh, oh, I'm expecting a delivery. Yeah, <laughs> that's happened before. So they had to like get up and take care of that. So like again, I'll I'll cut that. But otherwise, I typically don't do any editing because it's just mm-hmm. not needed. Yeah, it tripped me out when I first started. How many people told me that they didn't have to do any editing? And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Like people screw up. People say the wrong thing. Whatever the case is, but that that that's what I love about the podcast that I listen to and the you know doing my own is the conversational tone. You know. Oh yeah, exactly. So I I feel like we're probably we've probably already started. So a couple minutes ago, <laughs> we've given them already a, a lot of good information. <laughs> but I will get you introduced here. So all right, guys, I got Evan Johnson. He's a focuses on relationship building. He's got his company, Path to Podcast Success, and uh, his podcast also, Path to Podcast Success. Uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to, go ahead and subscribe to that. Um, he kind of focuses on psychographics when picking out his clients, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. But the reason I'm having Evan on the show is because he actually had me on his show a couple weeks ago, and a lot of the conversation was about building building that presence in the marketplace using a podcast and how you can you can reach out to leads, how you can have conversation with leads, how you can get free uh, coaching from podcasting. Yep. Just, just so many benefits <laughs> to it. And I thought that that would serve my audience really well also. And so right. uh, welcome to the show, Evan. Thank you so much for having me. It's always fun, you know, being on the other side of the mic. Absolutely. So <laughs> we were talking a little earlier before I introduced you there. Um, wh- how many podcasts are you at now for your personal one? It's at a hundred, I believe 170 something is the episode that's probably out today. But of course in the can, I, I have over 200 episodes wow. that have been recorded. So if you've been maintaining that five a week number, you know, coming out uh-huh. with five episodes a week, that means you've only had the podcast for 34 weeks. No, no, okay. I have I have upped it to five episodes a week okay. relatively recently. Okay, yeah, cool. no, I have had <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. I've had the podcast since like 2019. Gotcha. One a week for the longest time. Mm-hmm. There was some time because of personal reasons and you know some moves. Yeah. Some other stuff that the, and there weren't episodes being released for some time. Then I got back into it, and then I, I upped it to five a week. Now I've got to up mine to five a week because I'm competitive like that, you know. <laughs> I don't know right, that I well, can... not, I guess I'm going up to seven a week then. <laughs> Bring it. Let's go. <laughs> My friends are going to be like, Doug, all you do is podcast now. I know. I got to beat Evan. <laughs> yeah, Evan's putting out more than me. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Um, so – I guess take me all the way back. You know, I I did get a chance to look at your website, kind of go through the about me Mm -hmm. section and you've got a really cool story in there. And I'd love for my listeners to hear it kind of how you had the choice of two roads. So you want to walk us through that real quick? Yeah. So, I mean, started, you know, as an entrepreneur and as a business owner back when I was in high school, Mm -hmm. um, 24 now. So I'm definitely been out for a a while now, but it's still relatively recent. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, my, my my mom has been an entrepreneur for pretty much my entire life, and my dad has had the office job, right? He, you know, put on the suit every morning, go to work, work nine to five. Uh, he actually had a tax, he worked at a tax accounting firm. Mm-hmm. Technically, 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 he was kind of like an entrepreneur as well, because my grandfather started the firm, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, you know, as an employee, it was yeah. no, no different. Um, but during tax season, he'd be gone, I mean, there were some years where he'd be gone from like before I wake up for school at like five thirty six a.m. to like after I'd gone to bed at like eight nine ten p.m. Mm-hmm. during time I mean, he got all day. I mean, ridiculous, ridiculous hours. But my mom, she's been an entrepreneur for my entire life. She had the first back in like two, early two thousands. She had like a maternity t-shirt business where she'd make t-shirts with these fun little logos designs on them she's called mommy loves genius and i remember that because yeah and i remember she'd be in the room that would one day become my bedroom and in, in the house i grew up in she'd be i remember in there it'd be like you know a thousand degrees in there it'd be hot as hell because she'd be like pressing the shirts mm-hmm. herself you know and be pressing the logos for the shirts and of course that evolved she's still you know uh she's still an entrepreneur today she's not doing that anymore uh she, she does coaching now mm-hmm. um but 
like, you know, she was always there, right? And I love both my parents, you know, equally, of course. But as far as lifestyles go, yeah, I, my mom is is what what inspired me to become an entrepreneur because, like I said, she was always there. Mm-hmm. I mean, she could take me to school. I needed something; she could be there. Like, yeah. you know, it was always she. She was the parent who was always home, but she still worked because she was an entrepreneur. And so, you know, fast forward, I was in high school, and I was looking for some extra cash like most high school kids do. And she was like, hey, if I teach you how to edit my podcast and paid you a little bit of money to do it, would you do it? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure, whatever. So I did that for a little bit. And then and then she was like, you should do this for more people too. Make it like a business. And I was like, huh, I never thought about that. And so she referred me to my first client because your mom does not count. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know. And then I pretty much grew from there into what I'm doing today. And that's the bulk of my business is I do it's a done for you podcast production service mm-hmm. um that i do and uh yeah and then the podcast came in a few years after that when i realized i was telling everyone how great podcasting was but i didn't have one myself and so that's when i started a path to podcast success yeah that makes a lot of sense you know there's yeah. so many coaches and consultants out there that you know they they are formally trained to be a business consultant but they've never owned a business themselves right yeah and then I mean, look at like my mom she's a coach she's been doing business since like before anyone else I and mean, mm-hmm. she's doing businesses back when the internet was still yeah. <laughs> like a new thing you know like that's and there's like there's a certain amount of security in that for the client it, it yeah. doesn't mean that's how it has to happen you know uh oh, yeah one of my good friends rule. yeah my claudio you know he he has he basically has ran a business though he was like a vp for a construction company so he was basically yeah. the one running it, you know what I mean? But he technically was never an owner, and then he went straight into coaching. So that was always like a, a deal for him. It's like, hey, I've never owned my own business, but I understand marketing. I understand sales. I understand, you know, P&Ls, margins, all that good stuff. So for sure. But, yeah, you know, and that's one of the things I was asking you early in the episode. like how many episodes you at, and – um you know, you get to bring that experience level into it. And, it, and it's not just episodes, it's guests, because you said you've never done yeah. a, a solo no, episode. No, I've never done a solo episode for the podcast. And I, I bring a lot of that, of that into the beginning part, too, because mm-hmm. I help a lot of people start a new podcast. Yeah. And in that process is when, you know, you really want to dive into that side of it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then once a podcast is launched, then it's just like the ongoing production, where it's a lot more hands-off for them, but... That's that's where I find that experience to really come in handy for the people I work with is at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So Path to Podcast Success, you've owned that for, what is that, four years now, five years? The podcast or the business? The business. Uh, I, I mean, I started, I don't know when you define it, when it becomes yeah. a business, right? But like I've been editing podcasts. I mean, I started working on my mom's show back uh-huh. in like 2015. Okay. So nine years now? Yeah. Doing that, off, you know, that doing, type of work? podcast related work yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure i mean the yeah. the experience matters and especially at 16 years old i mean oh yeah your whole life has been podcasting professionally you know what i mean like yeah I've, have you have you ever held any other full-time jobs or anything did that ever get in the way of your your business no this I, is it I worked, at Star- I worked at starbucks for a month once okay what happened there that's it uh i hated it <laughs> so i quit because yeah, of course, I mean, especially when I was when I was when I was in like right when I was like graduating high school and early college, like mm-hmm. my mom was the only person in my personal life who who understood anything about the business, and she was the only one supporting that. No yeah. one was like specifically saying like, "Oh, you can't do this," like, "Oh, you know, whatever." But mm-hmm. no one act- supported it either. I mean, it was just like this little hobby thing, I guess. Mm-hmm. People, like, hey, you can't actually make like a living off of this, and so that so I only worked at Starbucks because I kind of succumbed to all of that. Mm-hmm. And was like, I need to get like a quote real job, and then I was this, and I was like, okay, I don't care how many people tell me this podcast thing isn't isn't gonna work. Right. This sucks. Having to get up, put on a uniform, go to a, go to a place, work there, you know, for how many hours, and then go home. I mm-hmm. hate this. I want to go back to working, you know, in my pajamas. Yeah. So I was like, I don't care how many people tell me that this isn't gonna work. I'm doing it <laughs> because the alternative sucks. So it makes a lot so that's, of sense. This is the only like you know full time like career I've had. Have you had any? challenges like in terms of scaling and stuff like that because you're uh from what i understand you're a operation of one right i think you may have some... no i have i have a team oh you have a team okay it's a small team but mm-hmm. I ha- you know they're they're doing the production work i don't do any of the actual podcast editing anymore right i have people doing that who are better than i ever was yeah you know what i mean so no, not only awesome. has it freed up my time but it's made the product that i deliver way better 
that's kind of where I was getting to it. Like, how did you come to that point where it's like, okay, I need to scale. I need to stop doing this stuff myself. Right. So, I mean, I, I, there came a point. So I forget which like famous rich person said, it. I remember Bill Gates, Elon Musk, whoever, Someone was like, get a lazy person to do the job because they'll find a way to do it faster and easier. Right? <laughs> it's a bit paraphrasing. Yeah. So yeah. to be completely transparently honest with you, yeah, I'm definitely kind of a lazy person mm-hmm. generally. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm still, when I say lazy, like I'm still, I still put in work. I'm like, you know, creating a life for myself. But at the same time, like, you know, years ago, because I, ha- I haven't, I was, I started outsourcing, you know, some years ago now. Mm-hmm. And uh, there came a point where I was getting more clients and I was doing all the production myself. And that was a lot of work. I mean, that was a good amount of hours each day. I mean, uh, you know, editing podcasts. And uh, there came a point where it was taking time away from from, like the marketing, the the selling, the growing the business. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, of course, personal life as well, because I believe you should work to live, not live to work. Right. Right. My business isn't my entire personality. Right. I have a life. Mm-hmm. outside of editing podcast and so i was like i don't want to keep doing this no i i, I don't want to be editing podcasts you know mm-hmm. i, I kind of want to outsource myself out of a job yeah and so uh so then i started i i found a uh there's some, i forget the name of the site but there was a site for like filipino online workers mm-hmm. where it was like it was they're all vetted like a, VA site. Like a, a professional yeah yeah and, and so i just went on there and i found someone Mm-hmm. Who who had an audio experience, and he was willing to come on and really be a part of things, and he's kind of grown with me, um, and uh, he does all of it now. That's awesome, yeah, and that's that's important too. I mean, I just hired my first VA like a year ago, oh, and yeah. she's been fantastic. She's my social media director, yeah, and so she's got three more people under her. You know, they all have different roles in the company, but uh, you know, she's got a social media assistant. And she is just killing it. She's fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. And of course, a lot of people, you know, that's that's a struggle a lot of entrepreneurs say. It's just, oh, it's, business is my baby. I don't want to give it out to people. Mm-hmm. So it's cool to hear that you've done some outsourcing as well. Oh, yeah. You you have to. You know, I'm. Yeah. And that's the whole deal is let, let, let somebody that is passionate about that line of work and good at it, you know what I mean, come in and do that yeah. and, and, and leverage it. You know what I mean? It's what separates a legit business from just like a freelancer. And it's fine to be a mm-hmm. freelancer or a solopreneur. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it definitely, there's a ceiling there. You're kind of giving yourself a job in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a difference. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So let's get into kind of, you know, and we talked a lot about this on your show as well, but I wanted to make sure we covered this because we got really deep into it. What right. are the What are the benefits of having a podcast? There are a lot of benefits to having a podcast. I'll just kind of go over the benefits that it's had for me, mm-hmm. some people that I've worked with. There's the typical benefits that you think of with a podcast, and that's audience building and content. So mm-hmm. pretty much anyone, if you're an entrepreneur, you understand the importance of content, Yeah. right? Whatever form that takes. Podcast is a bit unique in that it's it's very personal. Um, I don't know if, you've, if, if you listen to podcasts. If you listen to a podcast enough with a host – you kind of feel like like you know the host, right? Yeah. You kind of feel like you guys are friends almost in a way, even mm-hmm. though you've never met them and they've never actually talked to them. You're just listening to a pre-recorded conversation they're having with someone else or if it's a solo episode, you're listening to that. But it, it really, it, it's more personal than pretty much any other form of content because on a video, you, you kind of feel like the person is really putting on kind of a front, right? Because you're, yeah. you're putting on your, because you're recording a video. I mean, you're going to be a little bit different. Or like a blog or something. I mean, for all you know, they could have had some ghostwriter come on and write that. Mm-hmm. So I find a podcast. So there's there's benefit number one, I guess you could say, is it's the best way to get out your authentic self. And that's a great way to grow an audience. You know, you do that. Then you have guests on. And look what we're doing. We're doing an interview exchange. I had you on my show. Now I'm on your show. Yeah. So both of our, like, you know, audience numbers are going to go up because of this. Mm-hmm. I'm getting in front of your audience. You're getting in front of my audience. It's great. I mean, you can see where the benefit is there. Mm-hmm. And as far as, well, how do I make money from a podcast? There's, which is always, you know, usually the question when it comes, that's kind of what people mean when they say, what's the benefits? Right. What they're really asking is, how do I get money from this? Yeah. Right. How is it worth it? Especially if they're hiring someone like me, like, how am I going to recoup that investment? Right. Yeah. Then there's the standard sponsorships or affiliate marketing, which is fine. 
Uh, I don't really do that on my own personal show. I have no real desire to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not what the gold is for me. For me, what I found, besides, of course, you know, if you have your marketing in place and you can leverage that audience, get them on an email list, get them to a funnel, you know, all the standard yeah. business stuff. Podcast is an incredible tool to be like the top of the funnel and bring people into that. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, um, I, I, I specifically, when, I, when I'm looking for a guest for a podcast, I look for someone that could be an ideal client. Right. Now, I don't. I'm not structuring an interview or a podcast interview in such a way where it's some like manipulation to sell. That's not what I <laughs> yeah, do, right? Yeah. I, I, I find someone where if they would be an, a, a client for me, if I could see myself working with them, I'd like to work with them. Then instead of sending a cold, like a pitch, cold in DMs or, mm -hmm. or, or just be like, hey, do you want to get on a call or whatever? Yeah. Or just like, a, hey, how are you? It's great to connect. Uh, right out of the gate, I invite them on my podcast as a guest. If they read the message... Sometimes, you know, the message might get lost. Mm -hmm. So read the message, they're more, more, uh, most likely going to say yes to coming on the show. Yeah. Because who wouldn't? Yeah. Right? And so I invite them on the podcast, and then we, we have, I blow them away with a great interview, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after 200 recorded interviews, I'm, I'm really good at it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of fun on the interview. We really connect. Um, we get to know each other. We feel very comfortable. And then after we finish recording is when I'm like, hey, so this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Do you have a podcast? Or if they don't have a podcast, it's like, Hey man, why don't you have a podcast? Yeah. Or if they do, what's your production situation? Oftentimes it's, Oh, I'm not going to start one right now. Yeah. Right. Which is just a polite way of saying, nah, screw off. I'm not doing a podcast right now. <laughs> or, you know, someone like yourself, for example, you have production, your production is already handled, which is yeah. totally fine. Yeah. So then I, I, then I, you know, make myself aware, tell them how you offer a referral commission. So then people, you know, I find myself getting referrals every now and then from people. Yeah. But if even if that doesn't happen, worst case scenario is still pretty best case. Worst case scenario is I get a great interview, I get to release, mm -hmm. and then that ups my listener count and it helps me, you know, establish myself as an expert in the marketplace. All that fun stuff comes from releasing the episode with that person. So worst case scenario is that, which is still be pretty best case, and best case scenario is... Oh, right. I've been looking for, I've been wanting to start a podcast. Yeah. And then I helped them do it and then boom, new client. So in the world of organic marketing, mm -hmm. the podcast has been my way to break in to that and, and, and warm up a lead extraordinarily quickly. Yeah. Because really, I mean, I'll send a cold DM asking them to be on the podcast. They'll say, yes, I'll send them a link. Mm -hmm. There's what, three messages and they'll say great scheduled. So four messages in uh, Facebook DMs and then they get on a podcast and that's I block off an hour, and then you know we we try a little bit, then we record the official episode, and then we mm -hmm. try a little bit after that. And I find that, you know, that's enough sometimes. Yeah, you and know? then you're giving them value right away, right? Because they have a yeah. message, and most of the time you're qualifying them that they do have a message indeed. And then they come on the no. show, they get to put that message out there. They get to access to your your uh, circle of influence, your viewership. And, and so now the law of reciprocity says, hey, what can I do for Evan? You know, if I'm not starting a podcast or I already have production covered, exactly. you know, what can I do for Evan? And, you know, my immediate thing is like, I'm going to return that favor, get you to my viewership, you know right. what I'm saying? Right, which is an incredible, you know, exchange of value right there. And of yeah. course I do it, you have to do it, you have to do it in a way that's genuine too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I do. And I always, yeah, I'm doing, it's just, you have to be genuine. So the... The podcast for me, because I jumped into it so fast, and it was like the first thing I was excited about doing in terms of building this, you know, marketing and recruiting and machine, right? Right. Um, what it did for me is it, it kind of loosened me up, right? Because after you do a couple of podcast episodes, you know, now those conversations in general, you're learning things. You know, you've got people that would potentially be in a mentor type role to you because they've, you know, done so much more or they've done a lot more business or they just have a different perspective right oh yeah and so you you learn a lot but then also like you said it's a content creating machine right so somebody's sitting down and saying hey i need to do some reels i need to do some tiktoks you know what i mean they, they'll sit down they'll go to do them and it'll be awkward they'll have to have you know they may even write a script they may even like put together bullet points and it's just it, it doesn't feel natural but when you jump on a podcast it's it becomes a natural conversation after like the first five minutes. If you're, if you've done as many as we have, then it, 
Exactly. It's, it's, it's natural right away. And you right? can splash that up and how many TikTok videos are in one 30-minute podcast episode. Mm-hmm. And I want to highlight something you said, too, about like bringing on like people who, who you consider mentors as a guest. Uh-huh. I've had plenty of – I've had lots of guests on my podcast that are way higher like level in business than yeah. me. And and it's they're they were an incredible resource and I I even you know comment on this and like while I'm on some of those episodes some mm-hmm. of those people will be like this is this is crazy I feel like I forget I'm hosting a podcast I'm just like listening yeah you know what I mean yeah so exactly those You're like people are I mean well, oh I'm supposed to keep the conversation people? going I was just listening yeah. to you <laughs> oh, oh I have to speak now oh right I forgot you know <laughs> but like how many of those kinds of people are gonna agree to just jump on an hour call with some random person who reaches yeah. out to them none of them. Yeah, but a lot of them agree to come on a podcast, and you get the same thing. So I was, uh, I, I forgot why I was on Andy Frisella's website the other day, and then I noticed that he was like, "Have Andy on your podcast," and I'm like, "Okay, how much is this going to cost?" You know? Yeah, right. And then you go to it, and you realize, oh, you just submit your podcast. You you know you submit your story a little bit. Basically, you apply, and he comes on your podcast for free. Yeah, which is just blows my mind but it's one of the ways that he gives back you know so right. if anything start a podcast just to apply to have any for on your podcast and then you'll immediately blow up you know yeah right and how many people are doing honestly like he's probably making way it's probably good that he doesn't charge because i mean how many people are gonna you know like you you literally just said mm-hmm. make a podcast to have him on your podcast yeah exactly Andy for i mean that is that marketing right there is just mind-blowingly genius. Yeah. So, I mean, you're on enough podcasts. I mean, it's just. Well, and then your listeners, you know, if you have someone like that on your podcast, like your listeners become instant fans because it's like, oh, he's giving the little guy a shot. You know what I mean? Right. And, and everybody's a little guy compared to Frisella. You know what I'm right. saying? Or like a Rogan or something like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Rogan's, like, you got, know, you have, Rogan's got 30 minutes of ads before you even get to listen to any content. So. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm a Frisella oh. fan, for sure. Yeah, there you go. But, like, you have him on your podcast. You have Andy Frisella on your podcast. And that, like, I mean, that blows you up, too, mm-hmm. in terms of just your credibility. Yeah. I mean, you could always say, oh, yeah, I had Andy Frisella on my podcast. Oh, yeah, I had Joe Rogan on my podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that is that is instant clout for you. You know, that's yeah. people are going, ooh, okay, wow. that's You have a legit podcast then, you know? Exactly. One of the, the strategies that I heard, and I, I wish I could give them credit for this, um, but was, all right, don't just ask someone to be on your, your podcast, right? Look at their page. Understand what message that they're hot on right now, specifically right now, right? And right. this is really good for those medium type people. You know, like, like Drewby Wilson is perfect example, right? He's not like nationally famous or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like Orion Stuman. But he has a cult following, you know, he's got a great viewership and he's got your um, psychographic, um, (laughs) he's got your psychographic, right? Which, you know, we talked about earlier was, you know, how did you describe it? The psychographic piece? So uh, psychographic, so people are like, oh, what's your demographic, Mm -hmm. like ideal client? I think about it in terms of psychographic. So I look at them as a person, Mm -hmm. right? Do how much, how well do we vibe? Yeah. Um, What are they like? Just yeah, it's it's, psych- it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of difficult to describe, but like psychologically, right? That's the kind of traits I look for in a client. So yeah, psychographic. Yeah, so like you know, Drewby's following isn't going to be like victim mentality. They're going to be action takers. They're yeah. typically going to be entrepreneurs, which is more demographic. Action right? takers, higher level entrepreneurs. Yeah. People who you know the mindset is kind of squared away. They have a positive mindset in terms mm-hmm. of business and personal growth and development. Yeah. All of that kind of stuff. So like you would reach out to him and he he's he's hot on an Apex Lifetime membership right now, right? They just right. they just they just ended that. But at the, you know, a couple of weeks ago he was, right? So I was reaching out to him and it's like, "Hey, I think this is a great you know, place for my viewers to be in Apex or whatever the case. I want to get your message out there." You know, and and somebody that gets requests to be on their podcast like all the time that you're going to stand out to them, right? Cuz not only are you oh, yeah. saying, "Hey, I want to spread your message." and not my own message and not just use you to blow up my viewership. But you're also saying, Hey, I'm, I want to uh, spread this specific message that's important to you right now. And that, that means a lot, you know, and in, in sales in general, that's the way you approach prospects. You approach them by improving their lifestyle, not yours. Right. Oh yeah. And 
And so when you talk about your product, you talk about how your product can improve their lifestyle. And that's the same thing with, with doing a podcast request. And I love that strategy because one, it's genuine, you know, as long as you're being genuine about it. Right. But two, yeah. it's just the, the benefit on, on their end, whether you have five listeners or 500, it's just, it's, it differentiates you to know that you actually give a crap about yeah. their message. You give know. value up front. You give up them enough to be to invite them on your podcast and mm-hmm. showcase them and their work for you know thirty minutes or whatever. Absolutely. So, the the last benefit that I would want to kind of double down on is the credibility piece, right? Oh, yeah. And so, within within my own company, right? So, a lot of entrepreneurs start podcasts within your own company. One, you already have a following right there. You know, your your company's obviously going to listen to the podcast. But two, you just increase the credibility of new people coming in. And when you're like recruiting sales organizations or recruiting sales people and you come into a company and that company owner has their own podcast, it's like instant credibility. You know, like, wow, this isn't just another company owner that that owns his company and is hiring me or whatever. He's got a message and he's giving it to the world once a week, twice a week, three times a week, whatever the case may be. It has a lot of the same benefits as like a book. Yeah. Writing a book. A lot of the same benefits as writing a book, except it's real time. You know what I mean? And it's like way that, easier too. It's way easier. <laughs> I am uh, just beginning the outline of my book, and so right. yes, it is. Oh, and it never goes away. Too. A book is kind of one and done. Yeah, I mean, you can market the book, but it's still the same same stuff. Yeah, Podcast, I, I mean, every interview is a little different. After you get the initial push, the book out. A book is just a again a credibility piece and yeah. a loss leader at that point. Hey. You know, I would love for you to be a client, check out my book on this subject that I, right. you would hire me for. Yeah, it's always beneficial, but a podcast is like that initial benefit you get right when you launch the book. Mm-hmm. The podcast is kind of that, but ongoing. Like it never ongoing. kind of drops off because you keep releasing new episodes. And each new episode is like like a mini new book launch. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, especially for the consultants and coaches out there, um, people want to hear – and, and that's the whole deal is, you know, and what's blown up in the last few years is information-based selling, right? And, and information-based social media. So one of the great things about that is it's like, okay, anybody that comes to me through my social media knows what I'm about before they even have a conversation with me. And if they yeah. don't, if they're coming to me cold from a referral or something like that, I can send them a few podcast episodes that I kind of feel like embody my style and my philosophies. Right. And it kind of qualifies them. So, I mean, we, we could talk about getting new clients all day, and especially when you're first starting out, you, you'll take any client you can get. But after you <laughs> yeah, get right. to a certain level, you're like, okay, I need to be more selective about my clients. So and then I, when you take every client you get, but then all, you get a, a client who you hate and yeah. is horrible working with, and you realize, oh, wait a minute. This wasn't like, worth this it. This isn't even worth the money, yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't think about that at the beginning, right? You think any, it doesn't matter. And you can you know, do whatever you want, like just mm-hmm. give me money. But then when you get your first real like problem client, you realize you, yeah. you can and should be more selective. You know? <laughs> yeah, and so the, the, the podcast is kind of qualifying clients for you because oh, yeah. it's inevitable. Somebody refers you to them. They're going to look you up. They're going to see you have a podcast. They're going to listen to an episode, and then maybe they'll reach out to you, you know? Yeah. And so it kind of pre-qualifies them for you. You know, like I've been thinking about this a lot about my individual salespeople, you know, because – in, in, in our industry, you don't want them doing anything but selling, you know, especially coming from like a sales org like mine. And you want them focused on selling, make a bunch of money selling, and then, you know, whatever they do with their time is theirs, right? But what I'm starting to realize is, all right, so we've brought in, in like freedom training, tax training, mindset, you know, meditation, all this different stuff we brought it to our people and they've really appreciated it. You know, they've become more uh, bought into the company because of it. The culture is getting better. And, and our retention is super low than it has been in the past. And so, you know, we do this training throughout. And so as they move up in the company, in the sales organization, or if you have a sales team, it, it may not be a bad idea. But at some point, you know, maybe they hit like a regional level or even just a, man, a management level that you propose the idea of them starting their own podcast. And, and here's the deal. People get so hung up on, like you said, well, what is the benefit? And it, and it usually, you know, the, the, the benefit they want is more clients, right? Well, you right. got to get creative in that aspect because 
you can only have so many podcasts about financial services. You can have yeah. only have so, you know what I mean? Like, how are you going to hook these people? And it typically has to do with what you're passionate about in the industry. So like for me, it was building great sales teams. I looked around at the podcasts out there and there was a lot of sales podcasts. There was a lot of entrepreneur podcasts. You know, there was a lot of, there's a few culture podcasts, but there was no building great sales teams or, right. you know, building teams. And um, it was more of an accessory to a, a, a bigger conversation, yeah. right? It was the same with me. I started out, I only, I exclusively interviewed people with a podcast themselves and we talked about podcasting. Uh -huh. Hence Path to Podcast Success. And th yeah. that, I had a bunch of people being like, oh, I've never seen a podcast about podcasting before. <laughs> oh, this is super meta. Nice. Yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, I know. I mean, now I'm a lot more lenient with my, especially with the, like the, the, the organic marketing strategy I've implemented mm -hmm. with the podcast. I kind of have to be a little bit more lenient than that. Yeah. Um, but that's fine because I've gotten to the point now I have so many interviews like the thing I care about most is have, having fun conversations with interesting entrepreneurs right so it's no longer a requirement to have a podcast um, but at the beginning that's how I differentiated myself and kind of got it started and got the ball rolling mm -hmm. so, but it does know. it it becomes a podcast for podcasters yeah you know and yeah. and because we can relate to everything you were talking about in there <clears throat> and exactly. then to the people that haven't started one yet you know, we're sitting there screaming through the radio, through the, the stereo, like, hey, you need to start one already. <laughs> like Exactly. Yeah, we're talking about all these crazy benefits. You know, uh -huh. that's, that's, that's that was the goal for me. I'd talk to people like, all right, well, how was a how has a podcast in, impacted your business business? And mm -hmm. half the people would be like, oh, it's like the centerpiece of my entire operation. Yeah. You know, and they go into it and it's like, yeah. Well, and and people want to be around successful people. And, yeah. and definitions of success vary, right? But at the end of the day, if, let's just say, you know, and I'm, I'm using the example for my, my solar sales teams, right? And if one of them, they're a solar closer, they're all about solar, right? They go out and they start a podcast about being a homeowner. Funny stories about being a homeowner. That's the podcast, you know? Yeah, they're going to talk about solar every now and then, but it's not going to be the center of the podcast. But yeah. if they have a potential client... And they're on the fence. They're like, hey, by the way, I have my own podcast. Would love for you to listen to it. I think you get a lot of value from it. They send it to them. The homeowner's cracking up. All of a sudden, that relationship isn't just business. You know what I mean? They provided them some value. They provided them some entertainment. You know, and it, again, you could sell solar and be passionate about Pokemon. You know, my son is crazy into Pokemon right now. He's doing right. YouTube videos. I won't let him post them yet, but he's doing YouTube videos on Pokemon. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that may be your thing, you know, um, but I, I do, I think people need a creative outlet and, right. and that's something that, you know, instead of going and, you know, drinking some beers or watching TV, you know what I'm saying? You could go in and shoot a podcast every other night exactly. or once a I week. I mean, talking about, talking about like the business side of what I do and like, I guess you could say pitching mm -hmm. my business is the, the vast minority of, of what I'm talking about when I'm talking to someone that I, I want to like become a client of mine right like i'm that's not even that's like a tiny it feels like almost a little like you know kind of something thrown in at the very end there just kind yeah. of mentioning it you know because you still have to be you know brave enough to you know pitch what you do yeah but i've found that after you know you 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 show that creative side of yourself on the podcast mm -hmm. people are, are very very willing to to, to, to listen to that because you're, you're not feeling like you're being, like, hard sold anything. Yeah. And then you've also kind of opened yourself up. You've been transparent about, you know, struggles that you may have or stories in your life or whatever the case is. And, and again, the relationship takes a different, goes to a different level, and it, it becomes easier, easier to sell at that point. Yeah. It becomes easier Plus to offer there, your you, service. You gave value up front. I mean, that's a lot of value you gave up front having mm -hmm. them on your podcast. So, of course, they're going to be willing. I mean, like, listening to your pitch, like, people think, I mean, like, for me anyway, like I'm on a podcast, like it's like the least I can do, yeah. Is 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 hear what you do, and also like I'm just genuinely interested because we just connected for how long, and I like you, you like me, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean. Like yeah. that's what you feel like after you do the podcast episode. So if they're like, hey, can I tell you what I do? Yeah, yeah, of course I'd love to hear what you do. Yeah, it's crazy. I've never been. It's never been so easy for me to give referrals in my life because yeah. you know I'm part of Apex and I have all these podcast relationships that are outside of Apex. And uh, I've created all these relationships, and it's so easy to give referrals because you know they're genuine people. 
and you've had yeah. more than, you know, a five message Facebook conversation with them. You've had either a podcast conversation or a networking conversation, whatever the case is. And uh, you're able to kind of connect and then, and then they, they become top of mind, right? Not right. the guy that gave you his business card one time and, Oh, I got this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't know anything yeah. about that guy. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm at an event or something like that. Like, I'm not going to be trying to sell those people on working with me at the event. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invite them on my podcast at the event. And then we'll click on the podcast after the event. And, th and, and then I'll, you know, sell my stuff or whatever. Absolutely. So it's been a really good episode so far. You know, one of the things, and I think I told you this, that I like to end the episode with, so you may have been prepared for it, which isn't fair. You're not supposed to be prepared for the question. But um, the question is, what does legacy mean to you and what legacy do you want to leave behind for generations after you? That is a very, very good question. I mean, what comes to my mind for that, for that question is the importance of relationships and treating people like fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. because especially when it comes to business or just anything it all comes down to relationships and oftentimes people get really consumed with what they want whether that's more money or let's say you know you're young and dating you want a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever like you're really consumed with the things you want you have to step back and, and realize it's all built on relationships mm -hmm. so the legacy I would want to leave behind would be about that importance and how if you put that first then i mean you can i mean you know all not to sound cheesy but you know all your dreams can come true right <laughs> anything you want you can have if it sounds cheesy first. but it's true yeah but 100%. anything you want you can have if you put relationships first and uh that and also i'm also just very passionate too about helping um this is something i'm looking to get into within the next few years as my business continues to grow and expand is I really want to be a voice for young people, okay. uh, high school age, you know, kids. Mm -hmm. um, be, be the voice for those people that my mom was for me. Because she was, like I mentioned earlier when I was sharing my story, like my mom was the, oh, I can't stress, I mean, she was the only person that I knew personally. The the one and only person of all my friends, mm -hmm. all my family, you know, you know, my dad wasn't, didn't, you know, really encourage a lot of that stuff. My, my grandfather didn't, like no personal friends, no teachers, no mm -hmm. authority figures in school, no one. Except my mom was like, there's another way. You don't have to just go to college and get some generic degree for right. a career you don't even really care about. Right? Because I never knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I never knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And my mom was the only person who, who gave me a different idea and showed me there was another way to do it. So that's another legacy that I want to leave behind is I want to be able to be a voice for those young people. Mm -hmm. And... uh Show them that that you can you can create a life you want. You know what I mean by by doing work like this and finding something you enjoy doing and doing it. Um, and then you can have that freedom. You don't have to uh, get a, go in a career you hate, work until you're 60, yeah. and then retire and die. Right? No, I <laughs> love that. You can actually live life. So that's uh, that's that's kind of my answer to your question. Yeah, that's an awesome legacy to leave behind for sure. And one of the things that I've been talking about a lot, and I did a talk on this a couple of weeks ago is, um, you know, we have these values that we want to leave behind. And that's what I noticed, you know, my entrepreneur-centric, relationship-centric uh, guests, their answer is typically about values, you know, and yours is right. in relationships and building a, uh, building a life for freedom, you know, working to, living to work instead of working to live, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, so that's a value that you want to pass on to generations after you. And then, you know, the, fa the value is the foundation, you know, so you think about your passions. Well, typically, this is like the second most common answer is they want to leave behind their business, which is their passion, right? They want to leave behind, you know, barbecuing on Sundays, you know, or, you know, things that they're, they're kind of hobbyish. And that's the work, right? That's the work that you leave behind. And then, and then there's what the work produces, you know, which exactly. is the, the yeah. business as an asset, you know, heirlooms, money. And that's mm -hmm. the legacy piece. But if the foundation is weak and there is no values in there, then it all kind of falls apart. 
Yeah, it's just about, I mean, it's what life do you want to live and what can support that life? Of course, mm-hmm. I love podcasting. I'm incredibly passionate about it. I think it's, it's. I mean, I've, I've, I've set up my business in such a way so that interviewing on the podcast and doing conversations like this mm-hmm. is the vast majority of my days. Yeah. And I wouldn't have it any other way. But at the same time, I'm doing it for a reason. I'm doing it to support, like, a life that I want to live, mm-hmm. right? And that life is outside of the business. The business isn't everything, right? That's not what, like, that's not, that's not my entire life. You know, I mean, right. a lot of entrepreneurs out there, it's like, it feels like that's the only thing they care about, uh-huh. you know? Like, the, they'll show they'll show their, like, daily routine or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, 100% of this is either sleeping, eating, working out, or working on your business. Yeah. Like, is there nothing else? So, I definitely and think there's a lot more to life. That's impressive for somebody your age, too. Because it's typically mm-hmm. the ones your age that their schedule looks like that. <laughs> 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 you know, they might have a Tinder date in there. And that's about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They might sneak a tender date in there, but that's just physical needs, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, and hey, it, it does take me, uh, it takes me longer. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of those kids who are people my age who are like, oh, you're going out, you're going out on Friday with your friends. You're a failure. You got to put in the work. Yeah. Like those people. Well, yeah, of course they're going to achieve success faster than yeah. I, than me. But at the same time, I, I can't truly speak for them, but yeah. I have a feeling my life is a little bit more fulfilling. I yeah, feel like I'm a little happier day to day. Well, that's the whole deal. You're setting the standard first, and then you're putting yeah. the work on top of it. You're setting your right. values first, and then you're you're putting in the work on top of that, right? And yeah. there's certain things, and, and I started doing this about 18 months ago, and my life got so much more fulfilling. Is I said, okay, this is what I'm willing to do, and this is what I'm not willing to sacrifice. You know, the, the family time, my faith, my values. You know what I mean? So this is the the structure I'm willing to work in. And if it doesn't work in that structure, then I'm not going to do it. And if that exactly. means that, Hey, this year I'm only going to do 2.5 million and not three or not 5 million. Yeah. The hell with it. You can't take it with <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I don't, I don't accept calls on mm-hmm. Fridays because, yeah. uh, I, I, well, I still work on Fridays. I do, you know, like, you know, other, you know, back in work or other work yeah. I need to do. But if I want to go out, do something, mm-hmm. I can do it. You know, I just, I don't accept calls on Fridays and that's, that's it, you know, because my business is something that supports my life. Like it, it, it works for me. hundred percent. Yeah. I love it. All right, Evan, you've been an amazing, amazing guest and we've had a, a lot of great conversation. If somebody wants to reach out, wants to jump on your podcast or wants you on theirs, um, where do they find you at? Path to podcast success.com is my website mm-hmm. that has the episodes of my podcast. You can check that out. It has links to all my social media, um, a little bit about me and all that fun stuff. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. Um, I'm active on Facebook and Instagram, Evan Johnson podcast on Instagram, and then just Evan Johnson on Facebook. All those links is pretty, uh, I know it's a pretty unique name, but uh, if uh, for some reason you still can't find me, then my links are on my website. Mm-hmm. And uh, I encourage anyone to reach out to me if they want to be guests on a podcast or talk about what podcasting would look like for them in their business. Awesome. And yeah, I'll have all those links in the show notes as well. And uh, I appreciate you coming on, brother. And let's get building. Heck yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Building Great Sales Teams. We appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and leave a review wherever you consume podcasts and subscribe so you're notified when we release new content. Great sales teams aren't recruited. They are built brick by brick. Let's get building.